uh, environment what happens to option prices and of course between the low and the high we look at some of the intermediate values also and so you'll get a clear picture of what a certain value of the VIX index means for our everyday people and if we wanted to trade based on a certain value of VIX we know what kinds of trades that we can put on. This is a document issued by the CBOE about volatility indexes. This is a very recent document. It's, uh, it was released in January 2012 and it describes the VIX in, uh, in, in, in a few different terms. First of all, we can see that the VIX is based on the S&P 500 index options and is considered by many to be the world's premier barometer of investor sentiment and market volatility. So the VIX is a measure of volatility in the market and it obviously also measures investor sentiment as defined by the CBOE itself. Now we'll take a look at how the VIX is calculated a little later but let's just take a brief uh, look at what the CBOE themselves have uh, presented in this document. This is a chart of the VIX average daily closing value from 1990 to 2011 and so it's about 20 years. Um, so the VIX has been around from 1990. It was created by the CBOE in 1990 and it's been around for about 20 years. So if we just look at this top graph here, we know that the years between 1992 and 1997 were you can see the S&P 500 index here in the blue if you look at the second chart and then the orange graph is that of the VIX index. So in the early years you can see that between 1993 to 1999 the S&P was going up very nicely and in many cases the VIX also started going up. I guess this is when the VIX was very early in its uh, days and market participants were somewhat confused how to use the VIX and therefore you had some extraordinary uh, correlationships here. This, this is a correlationship that broke down, that broke down somewhere around 1999, uh, just before the dot-com bust, it started breaking down. So let's just study that. So what happens here is that the S&P 500 starts going up from 1993 or 1994 all the way up to 99 and 2000. And the VIX in its early years also started going up. We can see that the VIX level, the VIX level is measured on the left hand side of the uh, Y axis. So we have a VIX level of about perhaps 15 during these years. And as the S&P climbs from about 600 all the way to 1200 and, and, and further, the VIX also climbs and we can see that the VIX reaches a level of about 45 in 1998, 97, 98. And then the VIX actually starts dropping when the S&P starts going higher. And you can see that this is actually a low point in the VIX. So it starts a new kind of a relationship with the S&P 500 sometime around 1997 or 98. So as the markets start to go up, the VIX starts to come down. And once the dot-com crash happened in 99-2000, the S&P starts crashing and then the VIX starts going up. So from that time onwards, the VIX and the S&P 500 have been negatively correlated, meaning if the S&P 500 goes up, the VIX comes down. And if the S&P 500 goes down, the VIX goes up. So we can see that kind of a correlation perfectly from around 19, from the time of the dot-com crash. I mean, actually slightly a couple of years before that. It starts around 97, 98. That's when when the markets start to go up, the VIX starts to come down. And similarly, when the market starts to go down, the VIX starts to go up. So from that point onwards, the VIX and the S&P 500 have held a perfect correlation, inverse correlation. 
So then from 2002 onwards, the S&P 500 starts to go up and the VIX starts to come down. So from a level of about 45 in 2001, 2002, the VIX drops down again to a level of about 15, maybe even slightly lower than that. Um, and then we have the financial crisis of 2007, 2008, uh, mostly it's 2008 and 2009. So the S&P starts crashing again and comes all the way almost down to 600. But the VIX goes from a level of about 12 all the way up to 80. In fact, 